Mark Kenny Douglas, man. Mark's Food Solutions. Thank you for doing this. Great honor, great privilege as always. Um, look, I mean, I guess we've started the start and, and tell, tell, tell us what you do. I, I think we started life in the mall, right? Yeah, And then correct. you went into the professional catering solutions business. Yeah. Um, there's a bit of a story there, right? Yeah. Um, you've been an entrepreneur for a long time as well. In fact, I think for the past uh, 20, 20, 21 yeah, years, 20 almost, years, almost, almost all my life, of, yeah. All, yeah, so, yeah, so, so life, how, yeah. what happened there, man? Okay, in, in, in fact, I think it all begins, uh, um, let's rewind back a little, uh, 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 all the way back in school days, right? Uh, I think back in around uh, Om Tree, yeah. uh, first ambition was piloting. Okay, and then, and then, and then, <laughs> as you do at that age, yeah, yeah. So it's like I, it, it. Okay, it all came from, in fact, inspired by my uncle in in, in Singapore, right? So he's a pilot. Uh, you know, go down there for holidays. It's such a good life. You know, he's like he always talk about. You know, look, I only, I'm only stressed during flight, and after it's like, you know, chill. So it's something like okay, maybe I like to be like this man. You know, so piloting was the first thing that I had in mind, and then followed by uh, another inspiration by my mom's brother, another uncle in Penang. You know, uh, he's a goldsmith. Okay, uh, and he's this guy. You know, who who could not study in school, but he actually retired at 35. Wow. You know, so so in a way, you know, it was very inspiring. Okay, so back in my mind, okay, two things in life you got to do: it's either you be an entrepreneur, okay, or be a professional, be a pilot. Then, all right, so. In Form 3 itself, uh, I would say that uh, it was interesting. Um, went around asking friends and all, you know, uh, what, 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 it, what it takes, you know, what should I do, you know, what, what course should I take up, what's the rates of it and all. And, and I realized, in fact, by Form 4, that, you know, piloting's off, it's off the chart. You know, I got to go to New Zealand and do the studies and all the cost is way too much. Parents couldn't afford. Yeah. Okay. And then the reality hits in, particularly when right after Form 5 was, re- was recession. I think that was about 97th. Right, so I don't have the funds to study to begin with, you know. Um, at the same time, uh, most of the courses, everything is like um, one plus two. Okay, yeah. you do a year here, two years abroad, you know. So the only course I came about is this uh, by by informatics, this IT course, you know, which you can do literally the first two years local and, and the, the the final year. So I said, okay, that's fine. Anything I do, I need IT. Okay, and I know nothing about computers then. Okay, so. So the, the whole point was uh, going in, taking this course and saying that, okay, fine, whatever I do in future, I'll still use it. And be the first day on enrollment, I realized, you know, I don't have a computer. Everyone else here needs a computer, right? <laughs> <laughs> you enroll for an IT course, you have no computer. I have no computer. Amazing. Okay. Like, just, just during then, okay, the branded pieces were really, really pricey. Yeah. Okay, and clone PCs was fairly new then. So look at it, all the students here, okay, all in, all of you need, need a PC, so do I, you know, and I need to save some costs, right? So an idea came in mind. I said, why not? Let me look for two seniors, okay? One is good in hardware, one is good in software, okay? Which then I found them, have a chat with them. I said, why not? Let's start the business, okay? I, I need a computer. All the students need a computer. I'll sell the computer. You assemble it, you put the software in and we're in business. Done, <laughs> done. <laughs> done. <laughs> okay, so, so the very first business I, I started off was an IT business. Okay, so we actually learned to, to, to set up an enterprise uh, company called uh, JCM. It was, it was Jeff, um, um, what's my other partner name again, I forgot. Uh, M it's me, Mark, okay. Um, so a simple company set up, enterprise go on there, register, put a company up, each one came my $500, you know, that's, that's where uh, our initial capital, and we sell clone PCs, you know. So to assemble a PC, it costs, during back then, it's about 1005 to 1008. Okay, and we will make around $500 one, one unit of PC. Okay, so, and every month is enrollment of students. Okay, so business was great. The true business. Okay, you sold the students. <laughs> so, so, so I, I, I put it, I think it, it went on really, really great for, for the first year. You know, and then branded PC's price started coming down, right? So from, from a margin of uh, $500 to four to three, and it's hardly $200. Uh, then, we diver- then we diversified the whole business. We said, why not let's do wear and tear parts? You know, so the college itself was our client, which the hard disks, cartridges, and everything all, and ended up we diversified right into supplying a, the college that we study and all its chains. <laughs> 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 so it it, it 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 was it was interesting, you know. Uh, then by then I think I was I was through my second year. Uh, then moving on to to the third year where I find uh, the so called commute parts and all the the margins was dropping to hardly ten percent. 
So I told my two other partners and said, well, why not let's, let's move into networking, you know? And we were pioneers then, you know? Uh, but both of them love, 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 love their hardware so much. They change, they upgrade every unit of their, their, their computer, every little, the latest processor, they'll be using it. So in, in, a, in a way, I mean, they're, they're computer geeks in, in that sense. Okay? Yeah, so yeah. they're so into opening their own computer shop, you know? And I know that's, that's no way you, you, you'll make it. So uh, I think after about three, three years plus, they decided to go down the road, not into networking. Then I cashed out. Okay, so they went ahead to, to open an IT shop. Okay, then I venture into food. <laughs> 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 okay, so yeah, so, so, so in that sense, on the food bit, it, 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 was, it was also fairly interesting. It was just, uh, it all began with just a simple passion, love cooking. Uh, having this simple thought of uh, uh, a restaurant in mind that would serve your favorite food. I mean, you can go in day or night, anytime. Uh, you can eat your favorite food there. So it, it began with that. Uh, then following next, I uh, uh, wrote a pr proposal to Jasco. Meat Valley was opening then. All right, so we knew Jasco took up 40% of the building. And then the Ikea and Wong Tama used to have a food court right halfway through, through, through the uh, wall, wall you shop and all. Then I took the very same idea, wrote to Jasco and said, look, you took 40% of the building. Why not have an E3 outlet inside your space where you can retain your customer? And, uh, and, and I, I think it's, it's, it's a brilliant idea to, to actually have that so they can take a break and then continue to shop, all right? So wrote into them, uh, by surprise, they came back and they said, look, I Oh, interesting. Yeah, they came back and said, look, 4,000 square feet, will give you the space to do a cafe. No way, 4,000 yeah. is yeah. pretty big. Yeah. It's so huge, right? So uh, on that time, on that time I, could, I was going like, where am I gonna get the money to, to, to fund all this? You know? So wrote back to them, meet up with them and say, look, you know, all permanent fixtures born by you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Equipments, loose fi uh, fixture, I'll take it up. All right, uh, and they liked it because that time, I think that time, it, it was still managed by the Japanese and all, and, and the whole concept was this garden-looking cafe inside the depart department stall. So they, they liked the whole idea, uh, and ended up they agree uh, to a point to fund the renovation and all, and lose fixtures uh, by our side. Uh, in return, we give them a gross return of 18, 19, and 20% gross. That's all right. Yeah, it's pretty decent, the truth is. You know, uh, and by surprise, you know, uh, uh, the business took off really, really well. It, it started off in... November 19 or 17 in 99 if I'm not mistaken that would be the, the year yeah uh, and it just flew you know everyone uh, uh, the, the laksa began was, was quite interesting it was only the weekend dish okay the weekday we have the naslama and all this and uh, we sold asam laksa on the weekend Saturday Sunday okay and then Monday we get, we get people coming back asking for it Tuesday Wednesday then they thought we started on Friday Saturday and it became a permanent item on, on, on the menu uh, and in no time, 40% of the business comes from a single product. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a bit like iPhone, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was surprisingly. <laughs> so so I, th I, I think it, it, it was interesting, but the journey didn't last that long. Okay. Uh, during then, when I got the space, you know, I was just only 20. I couldn't sign a number high. Okay. Uh, uh, it's November, uh, my birthday in January. So in fact, I could only sign a number in January. So in between that time, uh, the, the decoration of the, of the cafe, okay, it was a partner with another partner who does plants, right? So the contract was parked under that company. And by that time, I think by the time we came to February, uh, March, April, that time, we supposed to do a sign back and everything. It was very, very difficult. Uh, the cafe was churning in way back during that time. It was about 120, 240,000 a month, depends on which month. Um, and it's doing way much better than plant business, right? So it is an issue signing the thing back. So I think it, it, it dragged on till somewhere around July, August, you know, uh, I decided just to cash up in that yeah, sense, yeah. you know? So I literally sort of cash up from the place, um, left the business uh, with some cash. And the ironic part was for the next, uh, I think 12 months, okay? Uh, I was fairly bumming around. Okay, it was difficult because once you cashed out, then my parents were gonna go like, oh, go and get a job uh, and work lah, you're doing nothing, right? But it's very really difficult. During then, pays were like, you know, thousand, two thousand dollars. And and running a cafe and you, you make like 30, 40,000 a month, it's like, how, I, I can't pallet, I can't pallet the point of yeah. going back and grab a job which only pays me 
a thousand or two because you you taste you taste honey you can you can't go for sugar anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it so it, it was a, a a fair challenge in that sense, and during that time, in fact, to get a space in the mall is difficult. You know, if you don't have a brand, you don't have a shop. You know, no mall wants you. You know, um, and uh, I think it it took about maybe around close to a year. Uh, finally, I found a space in Wang Tama, and we sublet this space from a florist next to Johnny Steamboat. Uh, and there was this lady doing a florist there and has a rundown cafe and I approached her and I said why not then the, I'll take the cafe up I'll pay you the rent you know uh, and we'll do food and, uh, and, and, and what, what's inspiring myself it's, it's I've done it before I could do it again you know because you've done this first place you know so uh, be it the, the second spot I, in fact uh, we went there and we did as well as what it is you know uh, in a very short period I think it's about a year and a half uh, to a point that the management gave us a proper lot. Wow. Yeah, okay. so from that uh, alley segment, we came into a shop. We were next to Johnny Steamboat. It was called Marks Awesome Laksa there. So you, th- you do more business than the, than the Steamboat? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's different, but, but what happens is that the sales business is as good as what we did in Mid Valley. Yeah. You know, so so that, that, that journey was, was, was interesting. Okay, so we did that. It, we built ourselves back again. And then the, the next one, it's about scaling. Okay, so I wanted to scale the business. Okay, uh, and my business, my second business partner was my mom. In fact, okay, I th- I think she's the best partner. But the, at the very same time, uh, it has advantages and di- and disadvantages. Uh, she looked after the business well, but could never scale. Okay, so mom was always a a, a housewife. Okay, great business partner. I'll know. Uh, there's no nonsense. Everything's gonna be perfect. Uh, on my side was I think during then it, it's like you know, I would like to scale. I'll hire a manager today. Yeah. She'll fire the manager tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hire today, she'll fire tomorrow. And and an and interesting part is, you know, I mean she she's keeping it simple. You know, she's gonna go like, you know, Ma, you know, yeah, in, in Hokkien to lang my tam ma. Enough. Yeah. You know? My tam sim la. Ah, my tam sim. La. She tell me enough really, you know, you it's comfortable and all. But the reality in in, in, in fact I was trying to explain to her, I said the world is different right now. I said though the the ironic part was you and me were to look at inflation rate, four five percent a year sounds the same. This year, 4 5%, 10 years down the road, they say 4 5%, maybe up to 10%. But I said the reality is the numbers of zeros on the 4% is different. <laughs> right? How is the cost maybe 80s during what? Uh, less than 100,000. Okay? Today, a terrace house costs you 1 over a million. You know? So I said it's no longer the same. I said businesses today can no longer, I know you can say you build something, you take your own sweet time to grow. So I think one of the uh, previous sharing on, on I think the VFM event last two years, I think I did share, I said any businesses to sustain these days, you must have a minimum 20% growth a year. You know, the first 10 is just to, 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 to so-called cover the inflation. The next 10 is actually to have certain extra to grow. You know, if you don't have that, I said very quickly. Is it for all food businesses or, or all think, businesses? I think all businesses, if you ask me, they, they have to aim a minimum 20% growth these days. If you don't, if you don't have that, right, you, you're actually declining in, in, in a way, you see, because look, your, your, your staff will expect at least certain increment to, to cover the very base. I mean, general inflation, I think five, six percent a year, they'll be there. You know, uh, you got to up the standard a bit. So maybe you play around five to 10 percent increment uh, kind of range. Uh, the company will need maintenance and other stuff and all to, to expand and all. So, uh, so if you use it, uh, a good 20 percent would be great. Okay, but if you don't do that, you know, I think in, in a very mere five years down the road, you'll be making zero, in fact. You see? So, yeah. So, so that, that's, that's, that's my, my perspective of you, you know, that make sure you, you're, you're doing, that's the base that you should target for, you know, as, as a point of su- sustaining. Yeah. So you've been in the food business like 20 year over years already, 21 right? 21 years um, to date, yeah. Everybody wants to do a food business. All the millennials want to start a coffee place or like a cafe. And it's cool, it's happening, Instagram friendly, but it's a different kettle of fish when you actually do it, right? What should they know about starting and running a food business today? Okay, I, th- I think I think this short recap, 
uh, there are many reasons why people are in the food business. Okay, some are in passion in, in general. Okay, uh, some are in because it's their their parents' dream, not not theirs. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, got, you got such thing there? Yeah, yeah. In fact, we, uh, along the way, you know, we we, we have different uh, uh, clients that that we work with. You know, that, and and like I say, you know, there are some parents' dream that that they want to be in the food business. They encourage the kids to go into it. Wow, right? so it's so, a tough business, man. It, Anthony Bourdain himself said it's bloody tough. It it is. I mean, it, if 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 you would look at it, you know, um, the. I mean, firstly, first thing in any business you want to get into, there has to be to be a passion and love, right? If if you have passion, it's it's on an auto drive. You know, I always give people an example. I'd say, let's say, let's say if you love cars, okay, you flip any magazine, you you look through the net, you know, any cars, your eye will automatically catch without effort, right? But if you got no passion in it, right, you're actually forcing yourself to actually screen through that topic, that things, right? So I think that already makes a major difference. Yeah. Right, so so passion has to be there. If you if you don't have that, then it's going to be really really difficult. We we, we came across. Uh, I mean, the business we do today, we work with different brands, yeah. right? All from from small food chains to, to 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 the bigger food chains and all, and and we do have people coming to us asking us to to, to work with them to to set up a business and all, and we still find. First thing first, it has to be a passion, you know, a vision that where they want to go, who they want to serve, and, and so forth. That's that's pretty important. But after knowing all that, I think uh, uh, for any food business, for anybody to do it, the very basic is still food. Okay, uh, and a lot of people uh, uh, missed out the point that you had to begin with, with the point of the menu. Okay, the menu itself is the first piece that must come in order for the, before the rest could come in. Okay, so how does the menu work? Would be that it will tell you the kind of equipment you need. It will tell you the kind of ingredients, okay, that where you need to source. What's the cost of it? Okay, uh, what kind of uh, cutleries you got to use to serve? It tells you the entire business just from the menu itself, yeah. right? So, so to get into the food business, primary, like I said, it's what food you can do, right? Come up with the menu, then you start working the rest. The numbers will then naturally come into place. So that's the very first piece people actually forget. They always talk about concepts, ideas, and all this, but it's still food at the end of the day. You know, uh, that's that's the the piece that that is going to make it or break it. You know, though though they say oh there are certain concepts that uh, I would say that uh, in general it's it's more people there for the experience and so forth, but it's still food. Yeah, they gotta sit down <laughs> and gotta adjust. So so many times I've been to like a really beautiful cafe, mm-hmm. really gorgeous, and but the food is like so average. Correct. And the um, question is, you won't go back there again. Won't go back there again. Yeah, but, right. But I've been to the scungiest places in Penang, mm-hmm. by the side of the road. The drain is so smelly. Yeah. Oh my God, the Hokkien Mee is so good. So good. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, you're people queuing up there, yeah. right? Yeah, so, yeah. end of the day, food, it's still the food itself. Yeah. Okay, it has to be right. Um, so, so, if you ask me, that's, that's one, one main thing that people got to get it right, you know, then the whole passion, it's, it's really. Must good. they be chefs as well? Okay, the chef bit, the truth is, at almost one point, anybody can cook these days. The problem is because if you don't cook yourself, right, and you mm-hmm. rely on the chef, you're in a way you're a ransom to the chef, right? Okay, I I, I think that there are certain things is a bit of a bit of a misconception between uh, what people think of a chef. Okay, um, uh, we we work with different different uh, companies and all food companies and all, and I always feel that look, you know, a chef duty is not to cook. His job it's it's too expensive to actually stir a walk. Okay. The role of a chef in the kitchen is actually to manage the kitchen. Okay. It's to make sure the kitchen runs in order. It's to make sure the food is cooked proper. It's to make sure that the right product gets out of the kitchen. Okay. That's supposed to be the role of the chef in the kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Uh so therefore I where 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 a lot of uh, management style has, has put it wrongly in a way that you get a chef to cook. Okay, um, it's supposed to get him assistance. He's supposed to be the one teaching and guiding, you know, not the one doing and who, who's running the kitchen. All right, so, so this, this is where I find uh, a bit wrongly applied in a way. Um, and, and the other one, it's, it's maybe today you, I can say the food business, it's, it's much easier to get into compared to before, as in getting into the business is easy, but uh, competitions are high. Okay, uh, there are a lot of ready products, there are a lot of ready processed ingredients, you know, there, there, there are a lot of uh, things which uh, I think you can learn any recipes through off the net, uh, through YouTubes and all. So these are all 
ready versus I think uh, 20 years back, you know, you, you, you can't find recipes at all. You, you, you need to learn from someone, you pay someone to teach you. You know, you're going to dig through recipe books and, and try to do it out. Uh, today, it's all there. Okay, so anybody can get into the food business, you know, but w what makes one succeed and one makes one fail? You know, so I still think it's the more passion, the more attention that you put into it, uh, it's going to make the difference. And then all in all in again, I said in all businesses, again, I think the, the, the fundamentals of business someone got to learn. It, it's, it's not just about being able to do this, but if you can't run your own business, you can't manage, you can't do your numbers and all, there'll be other problems also. Is, is there a way to make it a formula? Like for example, I, I, I really love certain dishes in Esquire Kitchen, right? Okay. Okay, and Esquire Kitchen, if you call the uh, the Sichuan um, um, eggplant, right? Okay. It's the same in Bangsa Shopping Centre, it's the same in Wanatama, mm -hmm. it's the same in wherever else. And I think they've got like six or seven branches right. all over the world, all over the country, right? Um, so it doesn't really matter who's in charge then, but they've got it down to a formula. And I think that dish has been there for like the last 25 years. Correct. Okay, is, in, is there a way to make it a formula? In fact, all, all this today, it's all simplified by a paste form. That means the base of the sauce, it's centralized, produce, and then, okay. re, and then redistribute. I see, I see. Yeah. So, so it's, it's what we do, in fact, for many, many brands in the market today. Uh, uh, they would come to Muxo Solution. We will help them to standardize their product. Okay, mass so that's a, that's a formula behind it, right? Yeah, and then they redistribute back to their, their outlets. Okay, so so obviously the food is the food matters, um, the passion matters to yeah. run a food business, but then to stay the lo the long term as well, Correct. right? Um, and then obviously the brand, right? Because the brand, if you've got a really crappy brand or people that doesn't buy into the brand or the concept, yeah, that also seems intuitively important. I I I feel it's 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 multi component in 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 the whole thing. Uh, People is another challenge, right? So it's it's are, are your people you know with you in the business? Are they are they motivated? Are they driven? Are they a part of your business? Yeah. Are they one with you? Uh, that's gonna make a difference. That you, it's like you could have McDonald's system, you know, in place, but then you don't have the people to run it. You know, uh, it's it's gonna go down crashing anyway. You know, so it it's it's just more than 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 what it is. Um, I I would take. Myself, for example, when, when I first got into food, right, I think I, I, I'm the one doing all the cooking, right, uh, because I love doing it. But as the business grow, right, I think one has to constantly develop himself and take up different role. Uh, uh, I would love to do the R&D, but I have to hire R&D people <laughs> to do the job today. I have to drive the business, right? So I have to do different roles in that sense. So to a point that we may not be doing the same thing that we like all our life, but we have to step up and move on. You know, so I believe on your end also initially you'll be the one producing everything on your yeah. own. But next thing you're gonna manage people to do it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. so I always tell people, you know, perhaps we, we, we will go through three different phases in our life. You know, uh, we were all born in a way students. Okay. We, we, we don't have the physics as a kid. Okay. Uh, we're developing our physics. We don't have experience. We don't have the man the, 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 the knowledge for it. So we go to school. All right? So we learned. Okay. Then it comes towards the teen and early 20s, right? Then I'll say, like, look, you know, we have a lot of theory. <laughs> we have learned a lot of theory. Physics are damn good, right? Yeah. As in, we are the prime time. So I, I think that's the called the coolie age, like, okay? We, we have to go and slog it out. The hard yards. That, yeah, yeah. So, but it'll come to a point, I think when you hit around 40, 40 plus, you know, your physics starts to deteriorate, right? So I think by then, your knowledge and experience are high, right? And this is where you go into the guru age, <laughs> <laughs> you teach you what age? A guru age. Guru, guru, guru sifu, yeah. sifu, huh? sifu, really, because you, 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 you have learned, you have practiced it, you have slogged it out, and then now you contribute back. You know, so it's 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 a cycle. You know, then you be the teacher to the young one again. So I think this is where, uh, partly, you know, as we age, we should learn to teach and share back. You know what okay. we've learned. Okay, so that's the problem, right? When you pass on your knowledge to the to the young ones, yeah, and then they leave the business, and then you got to retrain a whole bunch again. Okay, I, I, I think that that part, it's, it's all about succession planning. Okay, it, it goes many ways to, 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 to look at it, you know. Uh, it, it was also a thought that the other day, you know, I, I was sitting down with, with my guys and all sit down and I was wondering, you know, why, why would people come and work and then they, they would leave? Okay, so the big question is, you know, why people leave their job? Okay, number one is, you, you know, it's either they're not happy, okay, with, with their job, you know, uh, or they don't like the bosses or they want an increment, or they want progression, right? Uh, so definitely all this, if 
in assumption that the communication in web it's well, then I think there's no reason for anyone to leave and they could, they could grow in a company unless the company is stagnant, right? So to be, if you say the company is growing, uh, uh, there's always room for 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 you to communicate with your staff and all, and they 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 are developing themselves to whatever degree that they are happy or capable. Uh, there's no reason for them to leave. Right, so I, I always feel that's more of it. That why because the whole big question is why people leave the job yeah. to begin with. Right, I'm not happy. You know, I'm frustrated. I can't move. You know, uh, I think I'm underpaid. Yeah. You know, but if you communicate with them and then you start telling them, look, you know, if you want to progress, you know, then you got to do this, take up more responsibility. You know, the pay we high. You know, there's always room to grow. Then they tend to stick stick around with you. Yeah. So the attrition is still there, but it's, yeah. it's diminished lah. Yeah. You know. So, so if you ask me, then I think that's something. So we have to work, and then with the new millenniums, you, I always find that you no longer hire employee. They are all partners these days. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's, and and at some point I always tell them, you know, I I I I I would to share with most of my key staff when they first come in, you know, ask them, you know, are you an entrepreneur, you know, or are you just happy or are you still discovering, you know, uh uh, uh and all this. So I tell them if if you're passionate about food, you join us. If you have a great idea, I'll invest in it. You know, because you still need a partner anyway. You you can't go on doing it on your own. You know, so might as well we dance right now. You know, instead of competing, let's complement. You know, I said I would have the connection and certain experience. You would have the ideas and so forth. You know, if it's great, you know, let's go into a partnership. So I I find that's one way to retain if we stay professional where we are. And I think similar on 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 the podcast that you want to do, you will come across talents to work with, and why not expand? Yeah. You know, you 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 could expand in Indonesia. You could expand anywhere else. You know, it may be a new topic out of it, and that's your new partner. And then they need to leverage on your connections and and knowledge. You need to leverage on their creativity and all. And it's it's something that you grow. You know, so I've always feel that moving ahead, there'll be lots of collaboration, a lot of partnership. That that's where the new businesses are. You know, no longer like last time. You know, I'm going to compete with you and all this. Yeah, yeah. And That's a zero sum game right there. Correct. And 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 the other one, I I think I like to share is, is that uh, uh, competition, right? Uh, I would say don't waste time thinking about your competitors and all. You know, uh, it's an absolute waste of time. Uh, uh, just focus on what you what you're doing. Be good at what you're doing. That's good enough. Yeah. You know, uh, everyone has their own uh, style of doing their own market and all. You know, and and just just don't waste any effort on it. I just focus on what you're doing. Be really good at it. Go deep. Go 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 wide at it, and you'll be fine. No business is without its challenges, man. What should people know? Okay. Uh, challenges. In fact, there there are many. Okay. I think uh, the the very beginning would be the conceptualize of the ideas and everything all uh, to start off. Uh, what most people missed out, in fact, that uh, I think I myself, when, when I first started off in the business, which I never believe in a business plan. We always think that I know it all up here. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so obviously, uh, that's that's how everyone does or everyone begin with. Uh, you know, I think until the much later towards the point that I wanted to scale my business, I wanted to raise some funds. You know, uh, met up with some investors and all, and they said, "Look, you know, you you got to do your 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 five years projection, your business plan." You know, and there myself, you know, okay lah, no choice right now. Got to sit down, got to put the numbers down and everything all. And I think that that whole process, you know, changes my whole thought. You know, I've never seen the business direction clearer that I thought I knew everything, and I missed out a lot of gaps. You know, and and that plan not so much so is for the investor, but the truth is, it's for myself. So I I think the first the first uh point uh where I like to emphasize here uh where the challenge is, it's actually to get or to do a business plan up, uh just the finances I think. And even in this day and age, you still think it's necessary. It is, you know, it it's it's something which everyone take it too lightly, you know, uh which I think it's a must, you know, and and that that whole business plan it's never so much so for the investor as as, as the main thing, but it's to yourself. And by having that, somehow or another, it, it get, once once you have that in 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 place, you are clear and numbers doesn't lie. What what's going to happen is it's going to give you that 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 age of confidence to actually do it. Okay, so I think if you ask me, one of the challenges that many many people has lots of ideas and everything, but they never do it. Right, it's all talk, right? No show. <laughs> so so I think that that's that's the the part. If if they could put the paper up, talk to more people, you you get more. More ideas, you 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 gain confidence in in that sense. That then finally you're willing to put the money where your mouth is. 
<laughs> you know, it, it, then you'll start going. You know? So I think first, first challenge would be that taking off, uh, really doing a business. Okay? Then the very next step upon it, like I said, uh, and what, what I've learned also, there's, there's no perfect business plan. Yeah. Uh, you get it up 60, 70%, you're ready to go. Okay, and the whole idea is you take the rest of your life perfecting it. Because <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> the, the, the market is ever evolving, yeah. right? So, so you can say that you know I'm going to make this so perfect that that it's going to last. And and I think the the other note towards all this is that you know I, I would say, it, um, twenty years ago I have lots of hair. Okay, uh, my name is Mark twenty years ago. Okay, I'm still Mark today. You know, the same same person. But I will say, my hairstyle has changed, my dressing has changed. Okay, but same me. You know, so I always think any business you do, you know, have to evolve with time. It's still the same business, yeah. it's still the same thing, but you gotta be relevant. All right. You gotta be relevant in that sense of be it fashion or be it how, how you do it. So so I think that, that part is also really, really key. If if you fail or do evolve with time, you know, then it'll be an issue that, that you're gonna bring upon yourself. Huh? You know, so so that that's the, the other part of it. Uh and the big challenge actually comes in, which I find is called scaling. Okay, that, that's the next level of, of, of business. Okay, so my explanation it, uh, to, to, to people, to friends and, and all to the young entrepreneurs and I always tell them, you know, uh, uh, the scaling bit uh, uh, in sense of business is like... Uh, a it's a hard part, man. Yeah, okay, I, I, always, I always go this way. Uh, a good example, I always say it's, it's like scaling mountains. Okay, so perhaps the first peak you get up there, Okay, so for, from ground zero, from ground zero, uh, be it I make my first sales and everything, I do my own delivery, okay, then I'll be making $4,000 a month. So it's, it's positive, right? Then next thing you know, I'm gonna hire a driver. I'm gonna pay him $4,000 and get him a truck, right? I, I, I earn nothing again. And you're gonna go back down zero, right? And then you're gonna double the business up to make sure you, you, you move. So it's, it's like moving up, down, up, and the next level, you're gonna spend all your earnings all the way down and you move up, right? So, so I, I would look at the point of business is that scaling bit, it's where it's gonna take a lot of toll on you, you know, that's where you really need funds, okay? Uh, uh, funding needs to come in to bring you to the very next level. So, so be it the central kitchen business was quite interesting there. The initial uh, uh, first five years where, when I first got into it, you know, uh, based on self business plan, I'll so, so the, the current business, how, how long did it take before you saw the first step up? Okay, the first step up, in fact, <coughs> took me 30 months. 30 months. 30 months to, to break. To break even. To break even, 30 okay. months. 30, so nearly three years now. Yeah, two, yeah correct. In, in fact, based on calculation, based on business plan, wow, very confident. 12 months, maximum 18 <laughs> months, the reality is, as you go into it, right? Yeah. Oh. What year was that? Uh, 2009, end of 2009. So between the time you got out of the uh, the mall, okay, uh, I, it was it was concurrent. In fact, I, I got off the mall uh in in one of Tama was I think about 2011. Okay, so oh. so in fact two years two years right before I I gave up the mall is because the location I'm sitting at they were extending the mall and I know they're gonna take the space back, okay. and then they give me a re- relocation, right? So re- relocation could be favorable, could not be favorable in that sense and during that point of time I look at the market and all with the size of the mall is coming up and all I think the returns and investments could be slower yeah. so instead of taking that risk I diversify into uh, solutions uh. solutions yeah. yeah so that solution part like I said based on, on business plan right wow, perfect 12 months I got enough funds to sustain for 12 months the worst case 18 months I'll break and things will be fine but the reality is you get into it it's not what it is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay but, but just to highlight here again uh, Thanks to the business plan, uh, you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Therefore, you hang on, okay? Because after 18 months, you still don't break, right? The truth is, you know, your pocket's dry, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but with the business plan, actually, then you know. I, I, know where I know what I'm doing. It's only a matter of time that you're going to break, yeah. okay? Because the first start off within this food solution company was you. Was, you I was new. No one know what I do. So the first thing first, you know, the uh, our clients will go like, you know, uh, uh, partners that we work today will go and go like, um, what if you close down tomorrow? Or where am I, I going to get my food? Yeah, that's right. Big you thing, know? right? It's a real it's thing. It's a big thing, yeah. yeah so yeah. to them, it's, you know, number two is, you know, they, they will go, it's always trust and, 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 and confidence and, and so forth. They don't have that in you. 
you know uh, but as we go you know they will go like oh which client you're, you're catering uh? oh you're catering that, that client okay lah okay, then I'll, I'll work with you because they need that set of track comfort, record, yeah. track record so so again like said uh, uh, the business plan helped me in many ways to to actually hang on <laughs> to pull through to did you, break did you, even did you raise funds? okay during then during then no it was, it was all self fund okay. okay I even sold a, uh, an apartment for it okay this okay, is dumping okay. it this to get it through you see so it, it, it was very tough in a way but after 30 months you know everything start to turn around you know you uh, and and the thing is that because the services we do uh, and these are uh, so-called products that goes in the restaurants and all it takes time for them to gain the confidence you know and and number two is it's it's I'll say it's about six months to eight months for them to actually confirm a deal uh, to go through but what's in is fairly permanent yeah. you know so it, it's 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 in for for long haul so what's good is we have we have clients from way back day one till today you know uh, they've been with us uh, all the way and, and we, we do our part they do the part and and I'll, I'll, I'll say that uh, uh, in a way we, we create a lot of value saving for them you know I, I have restaurant owners who tell me you know look you know you you use I sort up the back end for them they rather take the central kitchen money and open more outlets. Yeah, it's where revenue comes in. That's right. You know, right. on 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 the contrary to this, if they were to do it, it's all pure cost center for them. You know, so so ended up those that work with us, they finally see the value in that center. So it's ever changing. It's same thing like co-sharing office, right? You don't need to own the entire space. You just need that little bit of it. So what we do is it's similar with that. We started off ten years ago. It's like a co-sharing kitchen. You pay for the fraction that you want, but we got to manage it because of the food safety standards and all. Uh, and everyone wins in that sense. And we could utilize the machine more than any other. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the model we are at. So the scaling part is the hardest part. What else is there? In fact, okay, the, coming back to th- that scaling part again, like say it's 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 moving. Uh, and somehow or another, uh, the the other part it's actually building your management team up. You need people. You know, and and the willingness to pay, I think that's important. You know, initially, let's say everyone, you know, it's hard-earned money. You know, I do everything by myself. Yeah. You know, and 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 I think one of the biggest thing to to break upon it's it's two key areas. One is willing to delegate it out as as a business owner. Uh, two is willing to pay because before that you're gonna go like, you always compare to yourself. Look, you know, I I could do five jobs. You know, now I'm getting this person and paying him so much to do one thing. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, so I, I, think, I think that 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 part, everyone got to learn to to, to change that and value your people in a way and empowering them. So, uh, and up along the way, like I said, you need you need people to grow your business. Okay, and then and then there's, there's this thing I always share with with, with some some uh, uh, friends and all. I tell them, you know, I said, you know, one thing school never taught us. You know, uh, uh, in the whole school system, they always been telling us, you know, uh, uh, you study hard, get a good job, you know, uh, you get paid, you know, and and the whole equation is you get paid. Who get paid highest for per hour basis? You know, that's that's so called uh, the the kind of income you, that you're gonna get. You know, uh, but they never tell us, you know, how do you gain more hours in a the day? There's no skill to that. In fact, there there is a way to do that. You know, it, so, so, but they never taught us, you know, how, how do I gain more hours in a day? I have 24 hours a day, you know, I, I sleep 8 to 10 hours away, you know, I, I could only do maybe uh, 10 hours kind of job, you know, if, if I choose not to sleep, I only have 24 hours and the productivity of my two hands are only 24 hours of job, that's it, of products that I can come up with, which they never taught us that, look, you can actually gain more, right? Do you know how to? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, the the whole thing is it's it's where you hire people. Yeah. Right. Yeah, people so are. You hire people. You know. So I said, you know, if I were to give you ten pairs of hands, you know, each of them would give you ten hours, right? Then you have much 10 more. Ten pairs of hands. Yeah. Times ten hours. Yeah. You know, that's the amount of hours you have in a day. You know. So th- a lot of things like that. So so it, it, in a way that this is where we, we find you know a uh, uh, school system doesn't teach us. <laughs> How to actually uh, make money, make full use of our time and all, you know, and 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 yeah. So if you ask me, people, yeah. So you gotta hire people, you know. One one of the challenges, I think, that first challenge is ourself, ourself of willingness to pay and get work with people and hire people. That that's one uh, uh, key area, which I I think it's many people just don't. You know, I I've I've uh, uh, classmates, you know, who took over parents' business. It was quite interesting. Uh, during the transition, 
And uh, uh, look, you know, the, the parents uh, uh, built the business from, from bottom up all the way and then so-called hand over the business to, to my friend. And they're reluctant to hire people to, to run wow, it. Wow, shit. And, and, and this is big companies making big bucks, you know. Yeah. But, but, but look, they just can't pay. Yeah. They find it very difficult to pay <laughs> someone, you know. Until the point that my friend took over completely and the parents decided to just step out. And then, yeah, then he started hiring, you know, degree holders and, and, and professionals to run and the business grow even, even further, further, you know. So this is where I, I find, yeah, the second challenge would be that paying someone, hiring people, building the right team. You know, uh, I, I think that's really important. Uh, in the food business, is is obviously sanitation is a big thing. Uh, cleanliness is a big thing. Okay, it is. If if you ask me, uh, yeah, this is a very interesting uh, 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 a question again. Uh, food safety, sanitization, and and, and, and all this. Uh, Malaysia, it's a bit unique. Okay, I mean it, places like Australia, you know, it's it's more of a government drive and all that. You know, all restaurants must be must be at least have a food food safety standards of HACCP and everything all. But Malaysia as a country, it's a bit weird because uh, we still have a lot of food peddlers by the roadside and everything all. Yeah. And and, and the government can never enforce it, as in, uh, 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 legally. In a way, if they do that, look, you know, we don't have our curry puff and nasi lemak at the roadside anymore. You have about a few million people with no jobs and no income. Correct, correct. And they so, hit so, streets. Yeah, so so in a way, we, we are we are trapped in that little dilemma, you know, that that we don't progress from there, you know. So ended up, it it, it makes uh, private companies that is the one doing like like on ourselves, we we will go for a higher standard. In fact, we we move from the musty to the HACCP standards and right now we are going for the FSSC standard because we need to cater to the international brands so we've got to, we've got to adhere to that, that kind of level standards but but this is all on to self-private initiative uh, but on the rest let's say it's a huge gap still you know so food safety is the one which I, I find I'm not too sure it, it has to be driven down legally you know but uh, yeah we are, we, are, we are at that kind of uh, dilemma where we are stuck at that so it sounds like you've been an entrepreneur. I think it's kind of like in your blood, right? Because you did your um, hardware business, computers, yeah. then you did the food business. Um, what business would you start now in this current day and age if you had a chance? If you're starting out, if you're a young guy, what would you do it now? What, what business would you work now? Okay, the, 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 the whole thing, in fact, in my view, right, it's, it's we, we don't need to re- reinvent the wheel, okay? Any business is viable. The, the whole key behind all this right it's how can we make it more efficient that, that that's all what it is you know if, if you were to talk about uh today we have this food delivery business that, that so-called seem to be very tacky and new right it's it's not new you know we, we have people catering food from the tiffin carrier it's been around long time ago yeah you know uh so so ended up is this the way they do it you know they, they create platforms it becomes more convenient you, you know uh uh, they, they, they so-called fix or create certain things which is uh, uh, during then it's hard to go by and they make it simple. You know, they, they actually make the community do the job and get rewarded in, 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 in that sense. So it's all about efficiency. So if you ask me what exactly uh, I'm doing today, it's also creating efficiency. You know, uh, co-working space is also efficiency of space. You know, that, that you don't have to, 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 to rent an entire space for yourself, renovate it, you know, just for your own use. So it's shared today. Uh, there are things like cloud kitchens which are coming out. It's also a shared space in that sense. It, it creates more efficiency in, in that sense. In sense of KPAX is lower, risk is lower. It's all shared. You know? So similar in today's business, I think a lot of things could improve from there. Uh, combination between technology uh, and, and, and traditional business, it's, it's where uh, that two synergy will create efficiency again. Uh, uh, the part where we're now on our side, like say, it's just the kitchen that we build up. We we take up the entire space. We we put the capex in, but we work with multiple brands. You know, we create efficiency for them. They they need a smaller footprint of kitchen. You know, so we may transact in food, but the reality is what what the partnership and where we make off is the efficiency that we save them time. We save them uh, uh, manpower in in that sense. We save them skilled workers. You know, so there's a lot of things in that sense that we are creating the kind of value. So similar, if you say what kind of business we go into, I think a lot of business, as long as the business is creating that kind of value, it's it's worth going in. Okay, so because every, I think a lot of people, they have in their mind, as you say, they, they want to be their own boss, they want to strike out on their own, 
a lot of guys they don't do it right because mm. they don't have the courage correct um, and then some of them int- I think conceptually they want to be their own boss but then they're like oh yeah what business to do right I like food but am I the guy for it I like to do logistics but am I the guy for it um, how would you advise people who want to be on their own uh, want to be their own boss but what kind of stuff I mean obviously is, is what you say is true right mm-hmm. platform efficiency cost yeah. savings all this but go a step further right what does it mean what kind of stuff? Because for someone who's been in business for a long time, okay, you see a lot of inefficiencies, right? I mean, for example, when Richard Branson did Virgin, mm-hmm. he saw British Airways was so inefficient, right? right. Okay, if, if you ask me, right, what, what to go into uh, in, in our life, somehow or another, uh, I would say initially, we're, we're, we're the early days of our life, we're after, after, after uni, you know, after, uh, after your studies, uh, you come up, you're like a a so-called unpolished uh, rock in that sense or, or, or an uncut diamond in, in, in a way you know uh, then you will start to fit in you, you'll get your first job some people are lucky they, they discover very early what they want you know they, they sort of have this passion they are driven they, they, they got into it they, they excel in it um, some of them don't they're still in the discovery mode some people discover early some discover late but the reality is if you had spent X amount of time in that particular industry, you're fairly locked into that industry. Okay, why? It's because the circle of friends that you know, or the context that you know, is there. Yeah. It's all around this this area. All right. So so the main review is if you ask me, if after you spend five years and beyond, or and or more than that, right? Uh, the main review from time to time, I always tell people, you get a piece of paper. Okay, this is a blank piece of paper. Write your name right at the center of it. Write a circle. Draw a circle around your name. Okay, and then you put another circle around that, and I'll say this is what your experience are. Okay, so you write down your experience. This is the thing that you've learned. And then the outer circle, you put down the context that you have, the people that you know. All right. Then right now you ask yourself, right, what can I make best out of this? Okay. So the whole theory behind all this is, is these are the given tools, okay, and materials you have this very day, and what can you carve out of it? Okay, because it, it's similar that I'm going to build a house today, right? And all I got is wood and nails now, right? I can't say I'm going to build a, 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 a brick house. I don't have that material, right? So I have, I can build a wooden house with it. So similar with, I think, wherever at that point, if you think you're going to venture into anything you want, take that piece of paper, put down the, who you are, the kind of experience you have, the kind of materials you have, and then the kind of context that you have right now. And this context will fade away after five years. These people could have retired. <laughs> they could have changed job. You know. But this is what you know today. Okay? And, and what can we do with this? All right. Yeah, I agree. Um, but is there a proposition for people who want to do a business and then they've got no prior experience? I've seen that happen before, right? I mean, Tony Fernandez, he's a, he's a music guy, right? right? He starts a bloody airline, right? What does he know about starting an airline? For example, right, and then some people are serial entrepreneurs. They do, they do tailor, they do banks, then they do property, then they do <laughs> retail, and then they they kind of like they somehow make it happen, you know. Um, Lim Gotong, right? Yeah. Casinos and hotels and cruise ships, huh? Okay, there's some correlation, but then they're very different businesses. Sure. How would you account for that? Okay, I I I think there's there's two things also. It's also like say it's each individual, uh, the risk of appetite, the style. Okay, I think, I think all of us are different. I, I, I will always say that I'm someone which is very, very safe. Okay, uh, are you really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, most entrepreneurs are quite risk. Uh, on, yeah, on, quite right? risk averse. But yeah. I'm, I'm a no, bit. No, entrepreneurs are risk on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so my side is I'll count like I'll measure, count three times, four times, then I'll do it. Yeah. Okay? But I'll say I'm a bit on the slow side versus a lot of other friends, yeah, which, yeah. Are, which are really quick, very aggressive, right? Very aggressive. Yeah. yeah. They'll go all in, all in, all, all in. in. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's it's but. At the end of the day, I still feel, you know, what suits you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Courses for courses, right? Correct. Yeah, so yeah. It's, 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 it's really different. So I have friends who, who has very high risk, adverse appetite, you know. They need to do businesses that, that excites them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. if, they, if there's no risk, right, he's not in it. Yeah. You know, he doesn't feel good, yeah. you know. They like to make... They have co- got to bet big. Big, every, big, yeah, yeah. big, quick, you know. Bet the house, right? Yeah, that, that's them. You know? I couldn't stomach the kind of yeah. risk, man. You know, so I am very slow as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so so like I say, it's 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 very uh, uh, different, and and I think also that the interesting part is it's uh, this this is where something a bit unexplainable, you know, that that I would say that similar. You said the the risk factor, 
the kind of partners you choose with um, uh, to work they with. They also dictate your appetite. Correct. They, yeah. they will. They will dictate. dictate. They'll say, hey, crazy, don't take such a huge risk. We'll take yeah. it measured, right? Okay. So yeah. so I find I find the, the other challenge in, in sense of business, it's it's a criteria to find the right business partner or investors. investor. So that, that, that one falls into, into five to six key points that, they, that anyone shouldn't miss. Uh, you know? I, I think primary one, you know, whatever investors or partners that you're going to work with has to believe in you. Right. If they don't believe in you, then let's not talk further. Okay. Uh, next one, it's more the concept and the ideas. They, they believe the idea works. Okay. If they have doubts, let's not talk further either. And then third would be the source of funds. You know, uh, it has to be something that it's ready for investment, but you don't want someone's retirement funds to get into, no, into it. No, that's, right. that's, that's hairy, man. Correct. Okay, so source of funds are, are very important. And then the, the, other, the other part I, I find it's also really, really crucial uh, um, is that there has to be someone, a seasoned investor. They, they have invested before. They have made it. They've lost. Okay, so they can stomach such a thing because no one can guarantee a business that, that you know that it will definitely work no such thing, no such thing right so the, the other part to, to it also I said value add you know that person has to value add if there's no value add just pure funding I said just take a loan from the bank it's much easier <laughs> <laughs> exactly right right less hassle yeah and, and, the, and the final one which I think which I always go with the X factors is chemistry you know you guys have to click you know, it, it, it's like everything all ticks at the, the first five checks all tick, right? But I, he doesn't like your face, so he just doesn't like his face. <laughs> you just can't go on, you know? So I think, I think that that area, it's also uh, really important that, that this is where the, the, the human being factor comes in, you know? Uh, uh, similar with you, you talk about um, uh, the chemistry, whether you have that, you know, uh, the risk appetite, the character, uh, are you alike? Because it's going to be problems when this guy said, I want quick, I want fast, I want to see my returns. Then here you here you are, you guys go, I mean everything but I go at this pace, All right? So so if you ask me, that will be yeah an, another interesting uh, area to look at, which is uh, uh really really really. Some people will say, oh, I don't want business partner. I know I know some people who will say, okay, I mean for example for me, I used to do business partners and then it, it kind of went a bit pear shaped because we were friends, right? Um, and then for example investors. Some people want to fund the whole business by themselves, right? Own cash flow. Yes. Because once you've investors, you've got to report, there's expectations, there's timelines. Um, What's my take to that? Yeah. Okay, if, if you ask me over time, uh, initially, let's say, uh, I, I went through that funny journey, let's say, uh, uh, the, the, the first cafe, it was sort of a partnership with, with someone, okay? That didn't fell through, okay? Couldn't sign the business back and all this headache, I got to sell the business. Uh, then it's like one bit, one bitten, twice shy. Okay, next business partner, my mom, amazing, fool, can trust her, but no growth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so then you know after like you know journey you know ten years down the, the business, I tell mom you know opening this food solution business, you be my mom only, not my business partner, because <laughs> 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 I need to grow, right? So so after that is also. I did the very same route. I, I funded everything myself, you know, no bank loans, nothing, you know, I, I did on my own. But I realized when it comes time to scale, the reality is no one can do big business right without partnership. Okay, there's no way you can raise enough funds to do it on your own. Okay, if you want to do that, yes, you're wasting years of your life. You know, so do you want to, to waste five to 10 years to build that sum of cash to go to the next level? You can't. You can't. You can't. Yeah. yeah. So, so from day one, if you know all this from day one, you can never buy a house cash to begin with unless you're doing something illegal. Uh, right? <laughs> that's the truth of the matter. Yeah. So, you still need bank loans, put it this way. The funds is always needed out there. So, if you ask me, you know, to a point where, why I said earlier, getting a right business partner, it's really important because you still need funds to move, you know. Uh, and there's always funds out there and there are always people wanting to exercise their funds. Okay. But... Who do they work with? Uh, can you all communicate? Can you all click? Does the person buy into what you do? I think that's really important. But that reporting bit initially, uh, it, it was also a toll on me when I first got a partner. But all the while, I've been, been with my own boss. I don't report to anyone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Your so own decision, easy. right? Yeah, yeah, own decision. I want to do this. I, I, I do whatever I want. But, but to a certain extent, the, 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 the reporting was not too bad. You know, that reporting is a good form of recapping of what I'm doing. Uh, it keeps me on my toe knowing that, you know, what are my plans, the truth is. And, and to a point where, where I think having an investor, a business partner, it's also, I say, if the person value adds you, it makes a lot of difference, you know, that, 
that you always get someone to hear you out. You know, you get, you get someone to bounce your idea off, you know, in, in, in that way. So I mean, it makes a lot of difference. So there is positive out of it if you find the right partner, okay? Uh, if you get a wrong partner, I think whatever you do, it's just negative all the way. So I, I think it's a bit unfair to or, or for us to actually group those two together in a way that you know having partners all bad, <coughs> but having the right partner makes a world of a difference. Uh. Yeah, so so that that's my perspective of it. <laughs> so it sounds like you're still in the growth stage of the business, right? Definitely um, it takes a lot of time. You own no operator. Yeah, but everybody needs balance, right? Because Correct. you're trying to keep balls in the air, right? Children, health. Um, I mean, a few weeks ago, I talked to this guy called Pankaj, Pankaj Kumar, okay. chief investment officer, worked bloody long hours, right? 18 hours a day, his, his, his health was suffering. Do okay. you know what I mean? Yeah. And at this day and age, our age or my age, there's people going boof, yeah. boof, boof, right? You don't want that because yeah. why are you in it otherwise, right? So how did you get balance? Okay, I, I always view this uh, uh, topic, right? Um, it's a, it's a very interesting topic. Everyone has, yeah. has a different perspective of it. So one, one, one angle that I'll look at is because at, at different times of our age, uh, we prioritize things differently. Okay? Uh, different generation, in fact, uh, also work differently. You know, it, 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 was, it, it depends on, on what year we were born. I'll always look at it. You know? um, it was always a big curiosity that how my grandparents think, how my parents think, and how I think. And so I'm, different. Yeah, so, so it's actually generations, each generation, they are different. But why they're different, actually the environment they're at, you know, so, so I'll say our grandparents' time, right, perhaps in the, the early 90s and all, they, they were all about survival. They don't even know there's tomorrow to begin with, right? So it's all about food and table, I could survive. And the all. way they work, anything, everything goes, right? Everything goes, okay? Then our parents will start looking at our grandparents, how they live their life. Right. So what they want is stability, right? Stability is primary, the most important thing that they ever want, you know? Then it comes down to us, you know, it, it is stable, the truth is, you know, it's more going to what ambition we want to do, you know? But, but in a way, we, we, I think, at, at, I think I'm think i born in the 70s and all, we, we see what happens with our parents in the from, from, they were from the 50s, 60s, you know, and we see through the 80s. Then we, work-life balance has so-called a small part in us, but not very much, okay? We still see the importance of stability is important, right? Because you see our parents looking at that, you know, hey, stay, get a good job, stable job, you know? But then we also have that point at a bit of work-life balance. I do what I enjoy, lah, okay? So we have a bit of that. But the new generation, right? Talking about stability is not even an issue. Once they're born in a, such a stable situation, there's always food on the, on, on the table. So it's more like, how happy and how where they want to travel it, it's a different perspective altogether so the quality of their life is very different you know so i think from this is where the, the whole gap comes in it's very different uh from each of this different era of how we think because the environment that so-called creates that kind of mindset so i think to answer that it all depends on which uh age we are at uh, but Never, never to say again, uh, you know, uh, uh, to view all these also, like I mentioned also earlier, I think uh, uh, the three phase of life, us being, you know, uh, the student age, the coolie age and the guru age, yeah. is also very different, you know, uh, because of physics, knowledge and experience, you know, uh, and things that we are driving. And, and somehow or another, I think the, the whole era that we, we went through, too many changes in a way, technology came in, uh, speed up so many things, you know, that, that there, were, there were so much more to do in a day than way back, you know, as a kid, I would know, you know, my dad would come back at five, six o'clock, you know, we still go to the field and, and, and have a walk and then, you know, uh, you have dinner at home and that's it, there's no phone, there's no mobile phone. You know, uh, you got to reach anybody through landline, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it was a very different time then. You know, uh, 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 stress level much lower. There's nothing much you can do after work. That's it. End. All right. Uh, today, I think the biggest stress is there's too much things to do. You know, I want to go to the cinema. I want to go to the alley. I mean, I want to go to to. I want to meet up with people. I want to do bowling. I want to do bouldering. You know, there is so much thing to do in a day. You know, one day I can do. There's so many things that I want to do. Okay, and I find suddenly there's not enough hours hours in the day. So I think that's also one part. Other other than you say that work balance. You know, so this is the other part is we are stressed by too many things that we, that we can do and we want to do and we don't have time. How do you do it yourself? How do you find your balance? You know, so on, on my side, I, I think it's also a different phase that, that, that we've been through. There, there are times where... where You're still you, pushing, right? Obviously. 
right okay right now I'll say it's much easier because uh, I said you get people you yeah. build your team you start to let go you start delegating you know so I think that that's a, that's one way to to balance out to actually share the workload uh, 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 have a team of people doing it uh. you know if you tend to grab and Leo, right? I think you <laughs> yeah. you're, you're just suffocating yourself and the other one is it's also a, a choice of perspective la. if you know I, I still tell my staff you know lunchtime it's a, it's a, a so-called um, uh, uh, a time where you should just take the break uh, take a drive go out yeah. <laughs> eat <laughs> And don't then, eat the food inside it, all the time. Yeah, then just take your time right back. It, it, yeah. It's supposed to be a break time, right? I I think that that has to stay. Not 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 pack your food. Not call not call food delivery over and then quickly eat and then do your work. It's it's not. It's it's a it's a it's a private time. It, it's it's what you and me work, right? I mean, I think it's it's one thing in common. Everyone, all of us work for what for money, money for what for food, you know. So that that's where it's supposed to to take that very. Uh, one hour to to enjoy that you know that hard work of labor <laughs> to yeah. enjoy your food unless it's yeah you're rushed on some projects you know that happens once in a while but but it shouldn't be a daily basis yeah. you know so i think i think that's that's the very little start of uh, uh basic of uh, work-life balance <laughs> by just <laughs> eating and feeding yourself yeah yeah you know then then the the, the whole family beat again like say uh, uh, will come in uh, on how you schedule uh and it's different phase you know, different phase. Uh, 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 everyone is in in in, in different. Uh, 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 what I call that? Uh, financially stability are very different. So we have to look at different companies or or, or different people. The, the kind of job they have, you know, and there's no one perfect formula uh, that works for all. You know, so sometimes I I, I would I, I was envy when I go back to Penang. I went see my cousins there. You know, uh, for Chinese New Year and for holidays. You know. And I, I look at them very. They live a simple life. They're always happy go lucky in that sense, you know. And and I always envy that simplicity that they have. Okay, but the other part, right? I'm always worried for them, uh, saying that you don't know what's coming. What's wrong? The market is changing. Yeah. The cost of living is high, you know. And you guys are so chill, you know. So it's like a part here you envy, a part here you worry, you know. That, that we ourselves in the city uh, are are never at rest, you know. We know like. Costs are going up. Things are getting more expensive. You know, properties are are, are shooting off the ceiling. You know how the next generation is going to afford to buy. We are worried for all this. Okay, but then there they are. It's just chill, happy. You know, yeah, just yeah. Laugh at, and we just don't have that. So so it's like it's a very uh. So so if you ask me, work life balance, it's 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 also very puzzling for for each individual yeah. because the atmosphere and environment that they grow up with is very different. It's just chill. They're in the island. Sometimes ignorance is bliss also. La. Correct. Right. Correct. So they don't see the necessity. They don't see, I mean, they don't see financial crisis. They don't see the burst of Malaysia falling like 45%. They don't it see any of that. It doesn't affect them. It doesn't affect them. Yeah. It doesn't affect them. They just go day to day. They don't see Bank Negara dropping interest rates. They don't see all that, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Because first thing first, they, they, they don't take much loan to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cash, so, cash rich, debt free, right? Yeah, debt free. So it's a different life altogether. You know, so so all and all in again, I like say it's it's all what we want, what we choose, the, the the kind of lifestyle that we want, that we put ourselves into it. Because at the end of the day, right, if you ask me to a certain extent, all you got to worry is those hundred years, mm. right? Well, if you want to even be uh, be ca- caring for your children, but if you don't want to be have that know. responsibility, mm-hmm. correct, then uh, it's just your lifetime only. It's just a lifetime. That's it. All all you need to do, do the reality is just a hundred years view. Hey, you know what? Do you, what do you think of that? What What is that? It's one of those fables where, oh, they say, oh, you know, that the rich guy goes to the to, to the beach. He sees his fisherman. Yeah, yeah I had that story. And, and then and then this fisherman, oh, you know, why are they sitting under the tree having a chat with their friends and having a laugh? They should just like get ten more boats, multiply their whatever income, and then at the end of the day, they just uh, the the price is just to sit with their mates and have a cup of coffee and have a laugh, right? Correct under the tree. Under, under the, the tree, tree, right? <laughs> <laughs> and this guy said, "I'm doing it every day." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so what do you make of that? Because because that's the flip side, right? Correct. It, it, that's why I say it's, it's, it's just a choice of life that you want. Right. And, it, uh, and the perceived quality of the life, correct. right? Correct. Because you can still get by on your chicken rice or you can have your caviar and, and correct. champagne. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a choice. Uh, you know? I, I, I think it's, it's just what, what we pick and, and what we perceive and, and what... It's, it's, 
I, I, w- I would say that it, we, we look at things again in, in a very different perspective. You know, I think they, everyone will go through a, a certain phase. You know, one, at one phase, you know, we'll go like, oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very curious of all these branded watches. You know, I, I, I want to have one of them. And after you have it one, two times, like, you know, it's, it's no biggie. It's, it's like, no biggie, right? Right. A watch yeah. is a watch. Yeah. It tells time. Yeah, yeah. All right. Th- that's about it. You know, so things like that. Uh, it's, it's always curiosity in that sense but there are certain people that say maybe there's this thing goes you know um, what you don't know you don't miss yeah right that's right <laughs> that's like, right I used to just make do it like Cadbury right yeah. now that I bloody have Hagen Dazs yeah. I can't have Cadbury anymore Cadbury, right. yeah. it pisses me off yes. man yeah. You know, <laughs> so like, what, yeah so what you don't know you don't miss you don't miss right. yeah so I, so I, I, I think it's, it's yeah that, that's life do you have a number a number as in to, to, you know, to, to pack it all in, have you? Had? A lot of people are asked that, right? Um, uh. And then, and then it's for them. Sometimes it's a moving target. Sometimes you say it's five. Then, or oh, when I hit five, it was ten. Then when I got to ten, it was like shit. Fuck it, hundred, right? Hundred. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but if you ask me that 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 point, see, way, way back, you know, much younger days, I, I I would look at you know initially you would have oh you know I would I would love to retire at thirty five at, yeah. at at forty. But you the know? truth is, entrepreneurs they never retire. Okay. At, at this time and age where, where I look at it, the reality is you never retire. That, that, that's, that's a real fact. No, would you want to, right? Because once you stop, that's when the brain stops as Correct. well. Correct. Correct. And the body stops as the well. The body stops as well. It's, it's, like I say, it's, it's two things. Like I say, the, the inflation rate is way too high. That's number one. That's, that's one, one main key thing to, to look at. But the other thing is, is that if you are an entrepreneur, you enjoy, you, you, you need that, that, that butterflies in the stomach every now and then, right? It's, yeah. it's what we chase for. You know, it's, it's no longer the money. It's, it's, it's more of being able to execute an idea and it tells itself it works, okay? That is the satisfaction that you want. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a chase, right? It's a chase. And, and, and the other one, yeah, if you if if, if were to say about this, then I would say that what I've enjoyed my journey is, uh, the little things uh, that happens. So along along the way, I'll say the first day I printed my first plastic bag with my brand on it, right? Wow, wow, wow I'm so it's happy. Big deal, right? It's a yeah, big deal. Yeah. I have my first carton box, right? Wow, it's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's this, a little pleasure, it's right? It's a little pleasure. And yeah. and, and this, this is one thing I learned very late, only of later. Huh? I, I just realized this. I said, we, we keep forgetting that we always thing the reality is when you reach the destination that's where the joy is it's not really man okay so so just to recap this right yeah. i said in life there's only one destination the last day you take your last breath yeah that's the destination so right now i ask you do you want to reach there to have joy immediately no right <laughs> I, I, I want the longer journey yeah, i want to yeah. enjoy the journey now <laughs> i don't want that destination right if you start Switching yeah, that mindset. Right? That's, you flip it on this coin, that's it. That's it, right. Yeah. So I don't want to reach the end. Yeah. I don't want that yet. Okay, so right now I think I better enjoy every single moment that I have here. <laughs> and feel the pain and the pleasure Correct. as well. Because they don't come without one without the Correct. other. Correct. You know, so so that so the, the main thing is enjoy the journey. Every single bit of the journey, you know, make the best of it, have fun. I mean like, like today I, I think it's a nice experience. Bit of a laugh, right? I never yeah. expected it because like, <laughs> I don't know you from Adam, right? Yeah, correct. <laughs> you know, so and 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 that's it. Every bit of the journey we enjoy experience we learned you know uh, yeah and you, and you just don't want this to end to begin with you know you, you want some, you want you want more tomorrow you know so i i, I think yeah that, that's how everyone should should uh, view life as you know that uh, enjoy every single bit of the journey and you don't want the destination so soon yet <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> you know yeah so the, so the destination is never where you want to travel and all the destination i'll i'll say that everyone should put in the mindset it's the very last day Okay, that is the destination. And right now you ask yourself, enjoy the journey. <laughs> That's a good laugh, man. Thank yeah. you for coming. <laughs> That's a good laugh. Thank you, brother. Come Thank see you. Ya. Come see you.